if say like a, a chat GPT and, and chatbots hadn't got the kind of got the interest they'd ended up getting, which I think was quite surprising to everyone that people were ready to use these things, uh, even though they, they were lacking in certain directions, right? Impressive though they are. Um, then we would have produced more specialized systems, I think, built off of the main track, like AlphaFolds and AlphaGos and, uh, and so on and our scientific work. And so that's created a different type of uh, environment that we're now all operating in as a, as a, as a, as a field. So so, um, and it's a little bit more chaotic because there's so many more things going on and there's so much VC money going into it and everyone's sort of almost losing their minds over it, I think. <laughs> and I, and I, and what I just, the thing, the thing I worry about is I want to make sure that as a field, we act responsibly and thoughtfully and, and scientifically about this and use the scientific method to approach this in a, in a, as I said, an optimistic, but careful way. And I think that's the, I've always believed that's the right approach for, for, for something like AI. And, um, I just hope that doesn't get lost in this huge rush. I'm obviously a huge techno optimist, but I, I want us to be cautious with that, given the transformative power of what we're bringing bringing into the world, you know, collectively. And um, I think it's going to be one of the most important technologies humanity will ever invent. So we, we've got to put, you know, all our efforts into getting this right and to be thoughtful and sort of also humble about what we know and don't know about uh, 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 the systems that are coming and the uncertainties around that. And in my view, the only the only sensible approach when you have huge uncertainty is to be sort of cautiously optimistic and use the scientific method to try and have as much foresight and understanding about what's coming down the line and the consequences of that before it happens. You know, you don't want to be live A-B testing out in the world sure. with these very consequential systems because unintended consequences may be, may be quite severe. So, um, you know, I, I want us to move away as a as a field from a sort of move fast and break things attitude, which is you know maybe served the valley very well in the past and obviously created uh, uh, important innovations. Um, but but I think in this case, you know, we want to be uh, uh, bold with the with the positive things that it can do and make sure we realize things like medicine and science and advancing all of those things whilst being um, you know responsible and thoughtful with with uh, as far as possible with with uh, mitigating the risks. When you extrapolate all this out. Out forward, and you think about uh, superhuman intelligence. What does that landscape look like to you? Is it is it like still controlled by a private company? Like, what should the governance of that look like uh, uh, concretely? Yeah, look, I, I would love. Um, you know, I think that this has to be. Uh, uh, this is so consequential. This technology, I think, it's much bigger than any one company or. Or, or, or even industry in general, I think it has to be a big collaboration with many stakeholders from civil society, academia, government. And the good news is, I think with the popularity of the recent chatbot systems and so on, I think that has woken up uh, uh, many of these other parts of society that this is coming and what it will be like to interact with these systems. And that's great. So it's opened up lots of doors for very good conversations. I mean, an example of that was the safety summit at, in the UK hosted a few months ago, which I thought was a big success to start getting this international dialogue going. And, and, and you know, I think it, the whole of society needs to be involved in deciding what do we want to deploy these models for? How do we want to use them? What do we not want to use them for? You know, I think we've got to try and get some international consensus around that. You know, sort of almost like the UN level, if possible. Uh, and then also making sure that the benefits of these systems uh, uh, benefit everyone, you know, for the good of everyone and society in general. And that's why I push so hard things like AI for science. And, and I hope that, you know, with things like our spin out isomorphic, we're going to start curing diseases, you know, terrible diseases with AI and accelerate drug discovery, big challenges that face us uh, and face humanity, um, massive challenges, actually, which I'm optimistic we can solve uh, because we we've got this incredibly powerful tool coming along down the line of AI uh, that we can apply and I think help us and uh, solve many of these problems.